ハッピーハロウィーン<笑> !In honor of this special day where we celebrate the undead and everything unholy We will talk about my top 10 scary games, spooky games, Halloween games. <laughs> I don't know how long I'll be able to keep this voice up, but let's go on with the video. <laughs> Brains. Right, number 10, first off, is Night Trap. Very kitsch. Very cool atmospheric game. Love this as a kid. I'm not sure if I could play it with the same level of enthusiasm as an adult as I did back in the day, but when I did, this had me enraptured. Going around this house trying to protect people from these intruders by setting off elaborate traps in the rooms.、Um, it was just so cool, so atmospheric.、Uh, the cheesy acting, you know,、uh, the, the cheesy sound effects and, and、uh, stage props and stuff. This is a cool game and I loved it back in the day. Good memories. Next one is Land of the Dead Road to Fiddler's Green.、Uh, obviously, based on the George Romero films.、Um, this is really cool.、Uh, it didn't get a release in Europe. I picked this up as an NTSC exclusive. And,、uh, but it's really atmospheric. It's got great zombie sound effects. It has that survival horror aspect to it where you're having to always scrabble around for weapons and desperately trying to find something to use against.、Uh, Your enemies are constantly coming at you.、Um, but yeah, this is a really fun game. Zombie games, as zombie games go, this is up there. Right, next one is Project Zero.、Uh, again, really atmospheric,、uh, nice story. It has a good use of a torch, something a lot of spooky games do. Sometimes it's what you can't see that is scariest. And of course, in this game, yeah, everything's really dark and you're having to go around with a torch, and the torch is actually. Or a camera, rather, is actually part of your weapon against the ghosts.、Um, but yeah, really atmospheric and、uh, moody, and I love that style of game, and I'm all about the horror games. I do like them a lot. Project Zero has got to be up there. Next on the list, number ten, seven, ten, nine, eight, seven,、uh, is.、Uh, Silent Hill, representative of the whole series, of course. Again, another game that has that brilliant,、um, moody feel that a lot of spooky games go for. That, you know, again, everything's kind of dark and you're kind of looking at the corners and it's all a bit、uh, spooky.、Um, that's what it's about. It's a spooky video. Spooky game video.、Uh, but yeah, Silent Hill is up there. Not a lot to say that people don't already know, so I will shut up. The next one is Manhunt.、Um, really. Uh, adult game, especially for its time as well.、Uh, you know, yeah, it really stood out amongst the crowd for being so unapologetically adult、uh, in a world where most video games were really aimed directly at children, really, still at that point.、Um, this is very mature, and、uh, that maturity, so to speak,、uh, lent it an extra gravitas.、Uh, the atmosphere in this game is, is palpable, it's tangible. You can, in, 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 In the fuzz and the clicks of the, of the cameras, and、um, you know, and, and, and just the, the hobble of the, of the enemies. And the, I don't know how to, how, I'm not doing it justice. This is Manhunt. If you play this, you know what I'm talking about. Very spooky game. Next up, now we're really onto games that really actually, not just spooky, but really made me scared.、Uh, we're getting up there to that level. Okay, so next is Zombie U. Very atmospheric. It was really cool to have a game set in London as well.、Uh, you know, most games、uh, really have kind of an American setting that we, from our perspective, it's nice to have one that's set in London with all those British accents and stuff.、Um, but yeah, that's just a, a side note.、Um, really atmospheric, really spooky, great level design,、um, yeah, great uh, uh, survival horror aspects to it. Again, having to always make sure you've got、uh, some kind of weapon that's going to help you out and having to juggle your itinerary.、Um, Juggle your,、uh, your inventory, sorry. And、uh, yeah, very, lots of tension, lots of atmosphere. I really enjoyed this game. I still haven't played it. I got stuck near the end, and somehow it walked me back to a point that I just, I'm, I'm kind of lost. I didn't finish it. I need to finish this game. But I really enjoyed every minute of it up until that point. Right, the next one is Dead Space. Well, this is Dead Space 2, but it counts for the first two games at least. Really had that sense of tension as you're going around these dark corridors 
and uh, yeah, the sound effects, the graphics, the whole uh, production of the game was really atmospheric. Um, Dead Space, that definitely shit me up a couple of times. Right, here we are now onto the top three of my scary games. Now this is not a definitive list. I have not played all the scary games. There's many more on my list I've yet to get to. So I'm sure there's better than the ones I've shown so far. But these three here are games that have actually made me scared to play them. Especially the, first, the top two, but this is number three. Condemned. Condemned has to be the game that has scared me the most of any game on a, on a TV. Traditional flat screen gaming. This has scared me more than any other game. And I think it comes down to a lot of things, but one of the things is the sound effects. The demented screams of the enemies that you hear before you see them. Before you see them come careering round a corner and scrabbling and uh, messily trying to desperately get towards you. You hear those screams before you see them. And it's so atmospheric. I definitely recommend playing this, on, if you can, on surround sound. But if not, on headphones. Um, if you can, it really adds to it. But yeah, again, you're going into these... You know, the, the darkness is, is a factor. You're going into these dark rooms and you can't quite see everything. And the enemies, the animation is so fluid and uh, realistic that it's actually quite spooky, the way the enemy... And I, it's actually, you feel tense walking around the levels. You don't know what's going to come and uh, it's genuinely scary. Yeah, condemned. Fine, fucking tastic. Well, here we are to the main event. Two games. They've shipped me up ridiculously. The first one I'm just going to get straight into. It's Rush of Blood. Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, um, on the PSVR. Now, we talk about atmosphere. Of course, video games, and scary games in particular, one of the key selling points is atmosphere. And with virtual reality, you have an instant atmosphere generator. VR gives you atmosphere. Doesn't matter what your game is, doesn't matter how well you've produced it, what genre it is, if you have a game in VR, it adds a layer of atmosphere an immersion that is beyond any other type of gaming, in my experience, in my opinion. So when you put a scary game in VR, it makes it even more scarier than you could possibly imagine. I mean, it's just a fucking video game. You know it's not real. There's a clue with the fact that you've got a big plastic headset on and that you're holding controllers and you can see the resolution. And all. There's many clues as to the fact that this is not real, especially the next one after this. And yet... The jump scares get you. I have shouted, I have screamed and jumped in my seat from jump scares from a video game. It's that immersive. Well, that's what virtual reality can do. And I think that fear is a uniquely easy emotion for the human brain to access. If you think about it, it has an evolutionary advantage. An evolutionary advantage to being scared easily. And that is because if you get scared easily, that means you are aware of possible dangers. And being aware keeps you safe. So being scared, being frightful, keeps you alert to any eyes amongst the reeds or shapes in the bushes or whatever, you know. We weren't always at the top of the food chain. Yes, and I think there is an evolutionary advantage to being able to be scared fairly easily. So I think this, feeds into how our brains are so easily tricked into being scared by things that are so obviously not genuinely a threat. And I think that's why scary films and scary video games work really well, because we have this innate predisposition to being able to be scared quite easily. It's not my theory, it's a theory that's been put out there before, but it's, I, <laughs> it's the only thing that explains to me why this is so possible. Let me get to the number one game, and it's going to be no surprise. It is Resident Evil 7. Biohazard. If you've played this game on the TV, I'm sure you enjoyed it. But until you've played this game in virtual reality, you have no idea of the capacity of video games to be scary. As I said before, virtual reality gives you instant atmosphere. And a big budget game like this in VR... Walking around that house 
you know, the level of detail, the level of uh, production gone into those, into that house, into the, how it looks, how it sounds, the characters in it, the things that happen in it, what you have to do there, the safeguards or lack thereof, the, everything about it. You feel like you're in there. Like, I can't play this game on my own. When I'm alone in the house, I can't play it. I have to periodically lift the visor off my head. Very, very regularly. Just to remind myself that, oh, I'm actually at home, I'm actually safe. I prefer to play this game when my partner's at home, so she can, I can talk to her whilst I'm playing. So it makes me a little bit less scared. And it's ridiculous. I'm a grown man, for fuck's sake. It's just a video game. But it is so scary. It is so convincing, that sense of presence. Even, even though all the clues obviously point towards you not being real, you're convinced enough. Your brain goes down that path far enough for you to scream, jump, need to take the headset off. It's ridiculous. It's the scariest game I've ever played and the scariest entertainment that I've ever experienced. And this is only the first wave of VR tech, you know, that in the future you're going to have higher resolutions, better tracking, all the rest of it, improvements in all areas, and games are going to be more realistic, more convincing. There's going to be a lot of soiled video game underwear, video game wear underwear. Whatever, there's going to be a lot of gamers soiling themselves in the future of scary games if this is... Uh, an indication of what can be done in VR. So anyway, there it is, my scariest game ever. Guys, tell me your scariest games. Have you ever been genuinely scared by a video game? If not, you obviously haven't played Resident Evil 7 yet in VR. But that's it. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> now I have to stop the video. Uh, uh, somehow, without...